Hey, Rodrigo. How are you? Hi, buddy. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Um, okay, so this is actually the third video we have tried today because we are trying to get our head around <laughs> a certain aspect, or I'm trying to get my head around a certain aspect of CKB. So what we're going to talk mm -hmm. about is, again, what actually CKB does and what is. So, Rodrigo, in two sentences, <laughs> <laughs> no pressure, uh, can you explain <laughs> what CKB is, because I've got it written down here. I've been taking notes. So CKB is a token that it basically tries to solve. Um... Oh, man, <laughs> <laughs> it's difficult to be sure than that. You, you this is normal, the, this is normal, by the way. So, what okay. is? It's a no. lot of things. <laughs> okay, all right. So what I've got here, that CKB is a store of assets. Yeah. Yeah. That's the basic what? principle. Yeah. Yeah. So it's designed to store valuable assets on its yes. blockchain. And yeah. one CKB equals equals one byte. One byte. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. there's uh, in total, there's 33 billion CKB, which seems like a lot, right? Um, yes, yes. It seems like a lot, but it's actually storage for uh, data, right? Yeah, it's storage, storage for data. When you see, when you see 33.6 billion CKBs, it's just pretty much the storage space for a cell phone. So it's for a cheap cell phone, actually. So it's and, nothing. And so that is one of the reasons why there is so many tokens, or it looks like, and people coming into CKB will look at this, oh my God, 33.6 billion tokens, yeah. that's a lot. But there is a purpose behind that, a purpose behind yes. the madness, so to speak. Yes, the, there's this intention of being secure, sustainable, uh, secure and sustainable for everybody involved. So in order to understand CKB, we've got to understand the ecosystem around it because many different blockchains have this, tries to have the same definition. Oh, we're storing value. Yeah, we store value. Yeah, people, when, when people listen about CKB, they will go like, um, yeah, Ethereum does the same. And I would say it does not do the same. So give me give me an example. What is the difference between what CKB is trying to do and what some someone mm -hmm. like Ethereum are trying to do? So Ethereum invented the smart contract. Mm -hmm. Period. It was a great invention, but there are many problems in the network. The basic one is the token price has nothing to do. It's uncorrelated with the value of the asset starts, start in the network. Mm -hmm. It's highly uncorrelated. There's much more value stored in ETH blockchain than the price of ETH reflects. So if you compare both, ETH is highly underpriced. And is and that a security issue? Is that a security issue? It's a high level security issue. Okay. Because the security of the network is dictated by how many miners want to participate in the blockchain versus the value that is stored in the blockchain. And as Ethereum price does not reflect the value of the tokens, we have too much value installed on a actually much cheaper security um, system. Okay. And All right. this is a problem because it's just too enticing for hackers trying to get the resources to attack Ethereum network and like st st stealing the, the, the value that's in there. It's like having gold being guarded by people who are not um, armed at all 
or being able to <laughs> defend them. Yeah. Okay, all right. If if I have a it's cell like phone, if I have it's a like, cell phone, it's like gold being guarded by teenagers or something, or five-year-olds. Yeah, that's a perfect analogy. <laughs> gold guarded by teenagers. Yeah. Even if ETH price is high, the ETH right. price is not not because it it is economically correlated with the tokens, but most people think that is, and actually, as ETH is the most famous network, uh, most famous, most used one for handling smart contracts, the transactions is high, so ETH is more appreciated as there are more uh, transactions in the network, but it has actually nothing to do with the, the amount of tokens that the value that's stored in there. So this is one of the reasons people would perhaps choose CKB is perhaps they have something of value, be it um, a share, a digitized share certificate, maybe an even an NFT, uh, perhaps some financial bonds or something like that. And they could store it on the CKB blockchain, understanding that the value of an asset or the, uh, the security of a CKB uh, blockchain will be directly correlated to the, to the value of the asset stored, right? Yeah, for a developer, it has um, the clear measure that if I store my assets in CKB or help people storing their assets in CKB, the value of the token itself will appreciate as more and more value is stored in it. And miners will be rewarded accordingly. Okay. So so coming back to my original point about the quantity of tokens being a lot, okay. that really doesn't apply in this circumstance, does it? Yeah. Not so to the degree most are, people think, these are right? Yeah. Yeah. Th there are two different things. First one is will the miners receive rewards according to the security I need for my assets? And this is the first basic question. And the answer is in Nervos Network, you have the guarantee that the token price and this, the network security is proportional. It's proportional to the value stored in it. That's the first base, basic thing. Second thing is, is it sustainable? Is it sustainable? Will it be here as the years come? And this is where state bloat comes in because in other blockchains, people are, miners are receiving for validating transactions. They receive the, the tokens and, and they receive tokens for mining blocks and the transaction fees. In Nervous blockchain, you also have that, but you have an extra layer of um, costs being held, account, held accounted for. In ETH um, blockchain, and I use ETH just not to make dumb comparisons, but just to use it as a standard blockchain that's great enough for having lots of value stored in it. In it blockchain, nobody's paying for the, the data space that's being used. So users and developers, they store as much data as they want in the network. So it's highly abused. The people who are paying for that storage are the miners. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. They're just offering a service for storing assets, but they're just giving this storage storage space for free. <coughs> and this actually causes the network to be used in an abusive way. So developers, they don't have any incentives, any economic incentives to be uh, 
uh, to use the hard drive space properly. Okay, and with CKB, so, it addresses that problem, that issue of, you know, paying, who's paying for this hard drive space, ultimately. You know, the entire yeah, economic exactly. model is addressed in that. And that's going to be a massive thing in the future when these databases get bigger and bigger and bigger, right? Yeah. When a developer wants to develop an app in Nervos Network, he has to plan how much drive, uh, how much, how much hard drive space he needs to store the code for the smart con smart contracts, um, the, the the general space for data storage and things like that. He has to pay for it. Okay. He pays. Right. He pays for transactions. He pays for storage. So okay. it's much more economic. If he has a reason, a strong reason to require more space, he will pay for it. And miners will receive the reward accordingly. So as, as the developers pays for space and processing power, you have the basic two things that have to be paid for in a blockchain service, storage and processing power, yeah. transaction validity. Okay, all right. I'm gonna stop you there. Okay. And, cause that's just a sn small snippet of what we're, yeah. what Nervous is. And then uh, we'll come back to it another time and nice. go <laughs> into more depth, okay? Good, good. All that's, right then. Okay. Thanks so much then. Great. Cheers, Rodrigo. Bye-bye.